after this neuro part which will be asked in 100% questions of the anatomy approximately 30 to 50% question will be related with the neuro part either the spinal cord brain mid brain syndrome or the head neck face portion so concentrate more and more for this topic and now come to the other part can you see this is the abdomen yes what are the topics you have to study in the abdomen why i'm taking you after this neuro part the abdomen because the abdomen part is the basics for the surgery as well as yes it is the basics for the ops gynae procedure that's why you have to go through this abdomen and the pelvis part what are the structures what are the topics which are important for the need yes anterior abdomen wall. yes remember this anterior abdomen wall is very important this entry abdominal wall is very important. Why? Because any kind of the surgery procedure, you have to cut this abdominal layer. That's why you have to study the abdomen. And after the abdomen, yes, you have to study the peritoneum. Not too much important. But for the peritonitis of the surgery, you have to study this peritoneum. Okay? So what is happening? Don't study peritoneum too much at this time. But what you have to remember? You have to study the foramen of Winslow. For your Pringles man over here. Just study this one topic otherwise if more if you want to study then you have to study what is the most dependent part in the male and the female in erect posture and lying down position again i am telling you peritoneum peritoneum is difficult topic don't go through the detail at this last time just summarize whatever i told you okay so after this peritoneum you have to study the git part yes you have to study the stomach to the anal canal you have to study the stomach then duodenum jejunum and ilium they are not important then you have to study the cecum and the appendix then ascending colon transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anal canal yes rectum and anal canal yeah they are important for the surgery purpose okay so now after this all you have to study the artery and the veins of the abdomen also artery like the celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery and among the vein you have to study the portal vein for your clinical purpose as well as for the questions for the anatomy these are not too much important for the anatomy purpose but just study for one time for your surgery and other clinical subjects and after that one question from the visra it will be asked more especially the liver coenox segmentation is very important but along with this liver you have to study the spleen you have to go one time for the kidney and the pancreas also at this last time now after this pelvis Pelvis, again, it is one of the difficult topic for the anatomy, for the oxygeny also. For oxygeny and the genital urinary surgery, you have to study what are the boundaries of the perineum and what is the perineal pouch. Now, what is the perineal pouch is not asked. Up to the 2012-2013, the many question has been asked, but nowadays, recently, the question are not going to be asked, but you have to go just a reading for the perineal pouch. And one line for the perineal pouch, you, have, you must know, that is the membranous urethra is the content of the deep perineal pouch. So, after this perineal pouch, you have to study the uterus, you have to study the urinary bladder and the prostate, just a general view. Not too much important for the neat exam, but for important for the surgery and the oxygeny point of view. Next, after this, upper limb and the lower limb. These are very easy topic. But what you have to do for this? Yes, definitely you have to study the nerve and the muscles. Not too much important. But what you have to do? You have to study the nerve and the muscles. And yes, why it is important? It is important for the orthopedic point of view. Okay, so when you have completed this neuro part, then just take a revision for the upper limb and the lower limb. What are the important topics in the upper limb? Yes, nerves and the muscle with the ortho and the radio correlation. One question from the upper limb will be asked and it will be in such kind of the manner. There will be the one x-ray and they will that will show the fracture. Yes, it, will, it is correlating with the radiology, then orthopedics. And in that condition, it will ask if there is a fracture at this part of the bone in the upper limb then which muscle is paralyzed means it is showing the question of the radiology giving the case of the orthopedic fracture and asking the question of the anatomy this is the general pattern which is asked from the limbs so this is the most important topic and after that one pattern is running nowadays that is the shape and the fibers arrangement in the muscles this is the one topic which is running recently okay what is the shape of the trapezius unipinnate bipinnate muscle Tibialis anterior is circumpinnate or it is a bipinnate muscle. Sartorius is parallel muscle fasciculi. This is very silly. 
but important question for nowadays okay so you have to see this topic and after that in the upper limb part you have to see the brachial plexus and the breast again i am telling you breast hernia thyroid question may be asked from the anatomy or from the pathology or from the surgery or from the medicine any kind of the thing but the breast hernia and the thyroid is important topic yes then in limb part one question may be asked from any muscle one question from any nerve of the body one artery may be asked one vein may be asked and one any question from the osteology it is one usual kind of the pattern so just take a superficial view so that at time of exam you will not be blind okay so after this short muscles of the hand with the clinical correlation it is one general pattern nowadays that they will show the muscles of the hand like the lumbricals and they will ask yes these are supplied by which nerve or or what is the function of this muscle so you have to go for this yes then come to the lower thing if you want to study the lower thing then definitely study the leg part because in the pj chandigarh as well as in the neat exam in the ems exam nowadays the leg in the compartment and what are the muscles vein artery in the nerves of the leg part it is commonly asked nowadays okay and after this joint you have to study specifically in the lower limb okay so what joint is hip knee joint and the subtalar joint which is responsible for the inversion and the eversion movement okay recently in the ems exam the question has been asked for the eversion movement so yes don't skip this topic hip joint knee joint and the subtalar joint especially hip joint and knee joint also important for the orthopedics and after that foot foot is not too much important but due to the arches of foot due to the congenital talpus equinovarus that condition you have to know you have to study the arches and the ligaments especially the deltoid and the spring ligament and you have to know how to identify the bones in the anatomy as well as in the radiology and after this thorax again thorax is not too much important but you have to go one view for the chest wall for the lung for the heart and the esophagus yes in the lung you have to study the pulmonary hilum you have to study the bronco pulmonary segment yes for the heart no excuse for the arterial as well as venous drainage of the heart and esophagus yes esophagus again it is a very important topic not only for the anatomy but for the ent for the surgery for the medicine for the physiology so you must know the esophagus question may be asked from the esophagus high probability okay so after this now see here chest wall chest wall one question may be come because during the various kind of the thoracic surgery you have to go for it so remember the chest wall is important and anterior abdominal wall is important so one questions are coming from this topics okay now see the embryology again i will say you that skip the embryology skip the histology when you have studied all the things then go for the embryology go for the histology okay so if you are not having the sufficient time so just study the pharyngeal apparatus and the neural crest cells derivatives only two things you have to see for the maximum output at this last crucial time minimum what you have to study for the embryology pharyngeal apparatus and the neural crest cells derivative and if you have completed all the other subjects anatomy also then you can study the development of the heart the development of the cns yes you can study the development of the kidney this all are the extra but you must study the pharyngeal apparatus and the neural crest derivative then you can also go through the general embryology also okay so then after that histology nowadays in the recent pattern the questions are commonly asked from the cartilage and the collagen okay the questions are going to be asked from the cartilage and the collagen continuous the questions are coming from here so again i am telling you don't study the histology but just go through this topic at this crucial time and skin you must know how to identify the skin keratinized stratified squamous epithelium you must know how you have to identify and what are the various layer where there is a dense regular connective tissue is formed where there is the dense irregular connective tissue is formed yes collagen you have to know and then if you are having the time you can go for the glands and the epithelium also and after the completion of this after the completion of the other subjects also then you can go for the lymphoid tissue for the other system of the histology also
and one more topic i want to mention in that is the diaphragm of the body remember there is a, not one diaphragm there are the four major diaphragm as well as four minor diaphragm means eight diaphragm in our body so any kind of the diaphragm may be asked in your exam so this is one list for the your exam again i am summarizing in a very short manner one question from the skull and the forearm one question from the cranial nerves one question from the brain section one question from the larynx pharynx ear nose one question from the eye part one question from the diaphragm one question from the esophagus one question from the histology one question from the embryology in the embryology high yielding topic is the pharyngeal apparatus neural crest cells derivative for the histology you must know about the collagen and the cartilages so these are the very high yielding topic i will say that not the 100% topics will be asked but it is a general pattern of any kind of the exam just go through the previous year question paper and you can extract the 80% topics and 20% don't focus for that just you have to focus for that 80% topics and definitely if you will do good for the 80% topics you will crack definitely with the 70% 60% if you are having a proper study throughout the year okay so yes practice gives perfection all the best my best wishes to you thank you so much Thank you.